Well, it's hard after an introduction like that to imagine that that's who I am. But uh, I've had an interesting life. Growing up as a child way back in Toronto, west of Toronto, my life was very simple. I uh, woke up to the sun. I didn't even have a manual alarm clock. When the sun came up, I seemed to jump out of bed and I was off and running. Didn't know I had ADHD, just knew I always had energy. And that was life for me. It was running through the fields, the farmer's fields where we lived. It was swinging from trees, building, building forts, playing hide and seek with the neighbors, just enjoying life, hating school, well, not hating school, having trouble in school, not knowing why. And fortunately, back then, no one had labels. So all they said is, uh, you don't pay attention. <laughs> well, I knew that. Uh, they, they said, uh, you are um, lazy. No, I wasn't lazy. It was just boring. There was more things to do with my body outside and feeling life with my body than there was sitting behind a desk. Now, through school I had my, my moments, but it was around grade five where art became a reality for me. And I've, I've got lots of art in my background. I've always been physical, so athletic endeavors. I played hockey for years. My wife thought they'd bury me in my skates. <laughs> I finally changed and I've done other things. I've done bodybuilding. I was in a body, life for, body for life contest. I completed that. So I, I, I love challenge, but what I've realized from that childhood where life was very simple, fast forward today. I woke up today with an electric alarm clock. Fortunately, it was music. And then the news, death, destruction, mayhem. The stock market's going up. The stock market's going down. We're losing here. We're gaining here. Our dollar's bottoming out. What's going to happen? We hear the globe has shrunk. So if someone hiccups in China, it's frontline news. So my life started this morning at a fast pace. And next thing I know, there's my cell phone. I appreciate Jacques saying, four, four emails. I don't get emails. I go to the office, they're all there. The phone's ringing off the hook. I, my life is surrounded by technology. And my concern over the last few, few years, and especially in these last two weeks, when that young boy, Brandon, disappeared. Now that is an area that we are only seeing the tip of the iceberg and the effect of technology. Most of us here have grown up with technology. We have seen it germinate somewhere back in the 60s and 70s. I mean, my biggest technological marvel was a radio with tubes and a black and white TV. Today, you can take your cell phone and watch Young and the Restless. I don't know why, but you can do that. <laughs> so technology is around us all the time. Now, here's a young man who was raised, born in technology. This is the first generation, I believe, that's totally been encompassed by, by technology. They've grown up, from the minute they're breathing, they've got a, uh, a microphone sitting in their bedroom, so mom and dad, who are down five rooms, can, yeah, he's still breathing. Oh, he's crying, you gotta run. <laughs> they're surrounded with technology. You see two-year-olds playing these little electrical games, and mom and dad going, oh, isn't this wonderful? They'll be on the keyboard in any day now. Well, you've got three and four-year-olds who know more about computer technology than I do. But I don't care. <laughs> Show me the button, make this machine do what it's supposed to do, and that's all I need. But some people are engrossed. Here's this young boy that, that removed himself from the reality out here and end up in a reality that he replaced with the fictional virtual world, and it took over his life. Now, psychology has been, over years, been addressing the, the technology that was available then, violence in TV and in movies. But we are just beginning to see what technology can do to us. Now, there's the good side. I'm not saying that it's bad, but we have to take back our life. We have to begin to assert control. We have to begin to say, I can make a difference, and it doesn't have to be bound up in technology. And here's a young man who now has disappeared for almost two weeks. Now, unfortunately, technology also serves the bad. There are predators on the technology now. Internet is not safe. So, my passion has become, how do we begin as adults? We as adults have to begin to take back our life so that we can pass it on to the, the generation that now is being completely enveloped by technology. So what do we do? Well, I discovered a number of things. I was in a, I'm, I'm in a network marketing business, and some of the training there was phenomenal. I was introduced to books that I would never, myself, being dyslexic, would read. My reading habits were simply, if it, if it has something to do with psychology, I can use it in my practice, I'll read it. I've never read a novel. I hate novels. But see, if I see it in movie form, I'm almost tempted now to go to Lord of the Rings. I've seen it so many times. Like, mm, maybe it's wise to try to go into the book now. 
But what I've found is there's key areas that we can start taking back our life. And the first one is physically and emotionally. Physically. We've got to start saying, what can I do to take back my life physically? The statistics are, are, are just um, confounding us that are out there about obesity. Half the population of Canada is overweight or obese. There are at least half the population is on some medication. See, people say they're healthy because there's better life through chemistry. Well, I don't believe that. Chemistry is not the solution. Learning to live a life where you honor your body, where you start feeding it the things that can make it healthy, are going to start taking hold. It clears your mind. You have energy. You face life stress. You actually can be less stressed when you're physically fit. And it doesn't mean you have to be an Arnold Schwarzenegger. It just means you have to know what constitutes physical fitness. What can constitutes health for you? You know, simply starting to buy organic, more organic food, eating more fruits and vegetables could be a key. That's one of the points I make. It doesn't have to be a complex diet. It can be something very simple. Change to a more alkaline diet and research back as late, early as the 1930s. Dr. Warburg won a Nobel Peace Prize because he discovered cancer can't live in an alkaline environment. Everything you ate today is probably acidic. Your body probably is acidic. It's simple. Start eating more fruits and vegetables. Start creating an alkaline environment. You will start to see your health improve. Now, don't quote me on that. I can't give you a Midas guarantee, but it's a start. Read up on that. My role is getting people to start educating themselves and taking control. Laughter is an instant vacation. I do it all the time. I'm always on vacation because I laugh a lot. I've been criticized on the I don't care. <laughs> Laughing is good for you. I can do a whole seminar on laughter. Laughter is very good for you. There's a whole list of things it does to the body. It's nice to see you're smiling and laughing. You're going to be very healthy when you leave here. <laughs> uh, humor is very important. Attitude. How do you cultivate a, a, a positive attitude? Well, it's very important. Feed yourself. You know, we wake up every morning with a white dog and a red dog. White dog is positive, red dog is negative. Which one do you start to feed as soon as you get up? Depending on the dog, you, yeah, you're saying the white dog, right? <laughs> you feed the white dog, the, the red dog will die. But see, we're surrounded with negativity. Some people are so negative, you could put them in a dark room and they would develop. <laughs> so what we have to do, you got that, someone got that, good. <laughs> what we have to do is we have to keep feeding ourselves. Not high caloric food, that's not the kind of positive attitude. You've got to generate a positive attitude. Reading, and I'm not a great reader, but you know how I conquer it? I read 15 minutes a day, one minute at a time. <laughs> I read five minutes at a time. I do anything because I just have trouble, a little bit of trouble with attention. Uh, uh, listen to positive speakers. Feel, when you're in a car, make that your university. Stick in a CD and listen to someone that makes you laugh, makes you cry, inspires you. And listen to positive news. Not this stuff that you think it came from some, well, I won't tell you where it comes from, but... They, we know from research that certain types of music will stimulate the insides to such a height that it's unhealthy. And these kids got these things jammed down their ears. This generation is going to have hearing problems by the time they're 30. Because they got these iPods jammed down here. And I can hear what's playing and I'm not <laughs> even near them. So cultivating that attitude. Cultivate a network of positive people. A network of people that when you say something, they'll say, great idea. Wonder how it can happen. Not, oh, that's a lousy. I've had too many people, I give them an idea, and right away they say, nah, you can't do that. And they give me 10 reasons why I can't. And I say, okay, fine. And I still do it. So you've got to surround yourself. And that's the hard part. One of the hardest things for you to do is surround yourself with positive people. You've got to learn to manage your money. I'm not great at that yet. I'm working on it. But managing money is another way to take back your life. Another thing that's very important is affirm yourself positively every day. I look in the mirror and just, hi, how are you today? And I just, wait. so I do it for myself. <laughs> but you've got to affirm. You've got to believe in yourself. But it helps if you have a mentor. One thing we've lost in this generation, and up for a long time, is mentoring. The Orientals have done it for centuries. But you need a mentor. I've got five mentors in my life. If I want to learn something new, I find someone that's good at it and say, will you help me get to a level where I can be competitive, or I can be competent. It's a great relationship, but we don't do it. Now, this is, this is part of mentoring here. This is great. But we've got to start mentoring. So those are just a few of the topics we, we, we cover. And I challenge you. I challenge you from my heart. Get your life back. Take it back. Because you're taking it back for this generation that's coming up. They need someone to lead the way. And who better than we to lead the way?
Thank you.